going to call to order the meeting of the board of select selectmen for the town of Rutland. Um, this is Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. Welcome everyone. We're meeting by Zoom. Not too many more of these meetings left, but um, we are right now by Zoom. And I'm going to start with our usual agenda. Approval of orders. Um, I believe the, I don't see them. Here. Oh, I do see them here. Um, they're in the select board room. They'll be in the town clerk's office all signed before I leave. And ask that the select board members sign not only the, um, the um, orders and warrants, but anything else that we might have here for you. Because uh, some of these are a little bit time sensitive. So please do get in and sign anything that we approve tonight. Uh, first item on the agenda then is the approval of the select minutes of the select board meeting for April 13th, 2021. Are there, is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Motion's made. Is there a seconded? Is there a second? Second. Second. JP seconds. Okay. Any discussion? Additions, deletions, corrections. Correction. Okay, Sharon. Page three, where it states that um, that I had attended meetings on the library. That is not what I said. I said I attended the College of St. Joe's. I've been in that library many, many times. Okay. So Ms. Ashcroft had attended. And Ms. Russell had been, you mean the St. Joe's Library? That's correct. Okay. Many times. Okay, any other corrections? If not, all in favor of the minutes is corrected, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, thank you all. All right, all right. This is the time when we have questions from the floor or public comment. I do believe we have one person anyway who wishes to speak. So I'll start with Mike Rowe. Thank you, Mary. Hi guys. Yeah. Um, I have a, a, a request um, coming from myself and Miss McReynolds, the art teacher at school. We're doing some uh, marking of trails behind the school and we'd like to uh, ask permission to use some of the old slate uh, that came from the roof that's up, um, stored up back behind the transfer station for art projects for the kids to uh, mark our new trails at school. So I'm just asking your permission if that's okay. Similar to the signs that you use to mark the Northwood trails? Yes, they're going to be all created by the students, though. Great. How so, much? How much yeah. stone? How much stone are you planning on using? Maybe thirty pieces. Well, because that was put aside for the fire station that's in the works, so I wouldn't want to see thirty good pieces that would otherwise be part of what we were planning for the department. Go. You know what I'm saying? Is there some way to ferret through? um what the department will need jp what were they gonna i'm not talking the marble i'm talking the slate oh from the roof not marble strictly the slate tiles that we took off the old town hall that there's like a thousand of them up there oh oh, oh i'm sorry i misunderstood yeah yeah not okay. marble no no not marble we're talking right. straight the the roofing tiles the slate roofing tiles sure understood Okay. Okay. So um, if there's no objection, I'll entertain a motion to um, donate uh, 30 pieces of slate to the school for an art project. So no moved. Move. Motion by JP, seconded by Sharon. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you all. Okay. Um, still 
public comment, questions from the floor. Does anyone else wish to speak if you're not otherwise on the agenda? Okay, I don't see any boxes lighting up. Um, I think you have all seen the email from the owner of or the uh, manager at the Holiday Inn, Anil Sachdev. He will be he re requested that he be allowed to speak to the board. Um, he will be calling in at six thirty, and we'll um, take him then and comments on the Holiday Inn situation. So let's start through the agenda and see how far we can get. Bill Sweet, Town Administrative Assistant to the Select Board. Good evening, Bill. Good evening. Uh, so uh, just a few items in the packet uh, for tonight. Uh, we have the current meeting schedule and committee agenda items. Uh, there is uh, a copy of the, the current Select Board project list and the 2021 goals and focuses, which uh, are actually two separate lists, um, but uh, we may want to talk about combining those or renaming them because it was leading to some confusion, I think. Um, so you have a copy of each of those current lists in your packet. Um, number four, uh, we received a letter from Portland Glass uh, in response to the uh, correspondence we sent to them about exceeding their sewer discharge allocation. Uh, they had said it was a maintenance problem in the building uh, and they uh, are asking that we uh, hold off on the decision till, uh, hold off on the obligation to uh, ask them to increase it uh, pending a review of this year's usage and uh, they expect to be back under their allocation. So my recommend on that one would be to send it to the um, water sewer committee. Sure. Anybody oppose that? Okay, we'll send it to water and sewer committee okay. to take a look at, all right. Uh, number five is uh, a summary synopsis of the calls for service from our town police department to the Holiday Inn um, for, the, for the board to be able to review. And uh, number six is for is under new business. It's the draft request for proposal for the Route Seven North, uh, also known as JP's Sidewalk Grant. That's for the scoping study. Okay. So, do, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, do we do that with you, or do we? Did Byron work on this? I see that you drafted it. So that is a, a template. So in, in, in the scoping study, uh, in, in the grant paperwork, uh, when we when they said we were approved for the grant for the scoping study, they sent us follow they sent us additional information and said, here's what here's a template you can use to create your RFP for your project. And it was a literal fill in the blank. Uh, so I went through and filled everything up, updated all the dates. Uh, I did, uh, Byron has seen this, and I did also um, work with Devin Neary from the Regional Planning Commission. He reviewed it, um, and we've got thumbs up across the board. Uh, so at this point, we just need approval from uh, the board so I can send it out, and uh, we'll be about a month that we have the uh, window open to be able to receive uh, proposals. Move to approve. I was hoping you'd say that. Motion made by <laughs> JP. Is there a second? Sharon, are you seconding? Um, I can. <laughs> okay. Is there any yes. discussion about yes. the... Okay, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> just an update, Mary, for, for my benefit. I, I'm, I'm unaware of when this started, whose idea was it, why are we doing it and what will be the end result and where does it go from and to? Okay. It wasn't very clear because it said, it said the route seven North border, but the mm -hmm. route seven North has two borders. <laughs> one's close and one's quite a ways away. I would assume. Well, I'm going to ask um, JP to explain it. There's a reason why it's called JP's sidewalk. 
Yes, okay. Is it going directly to his house? <laughs> Go ahead, JP. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, Don. Um, what's but what's there's, happening, there's JP? A pin, there, there's a pinch point right at where the business is located on Route 7, where, you know, where the southbound lanes lose the breakdown lane for a small portion. The, the original approach was let's break that curb in back so we can have a breakdown lane to the intersection of McKinley, but that was too easy for the state. They came back and said, we've got to to go through this planning process in order to get engineering approval to put the sidewalk through. But as a result, the people who live on the west side of Route 7 are going to have much more easy and safer access to Post Road and to the east side of town because you'll be able to safely negotiate if you want to walk or if you want to ride your bike, you'll be able to do so safely and there will be cross walks at seven eventually incorporated into the design crosswalks at seven and where jp post road so that people that want to cross over cross route seven will have a dedicated light that allows them to cross but that's probably <laughs> year years away so where does it begin the sidewalk where does it begin and where does it end so it goes back now to the town line, and, and this, my understanding is it's still going to be gravel, but I don't know where, if they're going to require that to be paved. But it starts, you know where Praticos is? Yeah. The city sidewalk, in other words, the city sidewalk on seven stops just the other side of Comcast, but Comcast is in the city. So our sidewalk would start where Praticos is, and it would come north cross McKinley and use the breakdown lane portion of seven to reach post road. So it would end at post road. Yes. Well, it's actually going to end right after garden time because they'll be able to use the breakdown, the existing breakdown lane. They might have to add a little bit to it, but that's the easy, that's the easy part of the project. Well, could you, could you tell me where this, where this all originated? I mean, where was the impetus for this? I've never ever seen anybody walking on that road. <laughs> well, Don, I mean, a little bit of it was a, a business on the other side of the road in that vicinity that was denied an Act 250 permit. Well, not quite that far, but the Act 250 folks wanted to see a sidewalk there. And that was prohibited for the, the business who wanted to um, locate there. And so they uh, withdrew from the permitting process. So not having a sidewalk there did create um, that situation a few years back. So it's much the same, Don, as why uh, Mary actually took the lead on having the sidewalk built from Adele Stanley down to Route 7 because pedestrian access plays a big part in being able to develop adjoining properties, especially being able to cross Route 7 and leading up to Route 7. So when we built that sidewalk next to the, the rental place there, U-Haul, that allowed that will allow for a lot more development down on Ranbury Road because pedestrians from Adele Stanley and the east part of town will have access across. So that was part of the motivation as well. Well, I suppose if you get cajoled into something like that, I, you don't have much choice, JP. So I, I, I can see why, you know, you can't argue with the state if they're going to deny a permit based on lack of sidewalks. Uh, I think... Uh, What's what's our what's our cost share in this project, Mary? This is the scoping study part. Um, so, Bill, is this a 10 percent match? I, I believe so. I don't have the grant right up in front of me, but I, I believe it is ten percent. Um, I'd, have to, I'd have to go back and find it, but yeah, we we we, we, are, so we already have Don. Just you know, we already been approved for this part of the grant, um, and this is not. But this is not part of the construction. This is just for the scoping study to tell us all the things that we should consider the best places for it and things like that. This is not to, to do construction. Gary? Yeah, Byron. Uh, that's a 20% match. 20% town match, okay. 20% match. 
Okay, well. And I think we put right. this in our budget. I, this was one of the items that we put in our budget, anticipating that we would see this grant. You put the, the planning money in the budget. Right. So we don't know what the, uh, what the total cost will be. No. Um, no. I, I might just add that the town has always taken, uh, well, uh, absent state mandates like this, the town has always taken the position that we didn't want to get ourselves into heavy infrastructure requirements like the city. So we didn't put street lights everywhere and we didn't put sidewalks everywhere and so forth for, for obvious reasons. So, uh, I, you know, I, I certainly hear what JP was saying about the state's requirements. And, and I would certainly hope that we do see some additional development. I don't know as we've seen any based on the Adele Sandley sidewalk, but we certainly get extra maintenance summer and winter. Uh, they got to be cleared and plowed and so forth. And this is one of those creeping things that just get you into more, more infrastructure, more maintenance requirements. And uh, that makes you more like a city instead of a town. So I'm not in favor of building sidewalks all over the town, but I understand what JP said about the state's requirements. I'm, I'm not very happy with it, but uh, I mean, they don't like to see sprawl, but then now they want to put sidewalks everywhere in order to allow you to develop. That seems a little ridiculous. Most people that shop go with their cars. I haven't seen a whole heck of a lot of people that are walking to shopping centers. I really haven't, but I guess that's just me. I don't know. I'd like to know what the usage, if anybody's checked the usage of the Adele Stanley sidewalk, I'd like to know what the actual usage is because that would either justify or not justify uh, building it, other than the fact uh, that there's there may be development there. Anyway. Okay, so we that's it. motion's Anyways, made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Gary? Byron. Um, in, in just response to Don, um, I too kind of held those same views that you had done, but in the last couple of years, uh, doing uh, snow plowing on the sidewalks, um, it doesn't matter if I get there at four o'clock in the morning to start plowing the sidewalk, there's already footprints ahead of me. So somewhere, somewhere along the line, it doesn't matter if the center Alton sidewalks, the New Hall sidewalks, or the, or the post road sidewalk, there's always someone using them because there's footprints there. And that has tempered my thinking in relation to um, the, ne the necessity for sidewalks when we get near some of our um, uh, more populated areas and areas that have shopping. Thanks, bye. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, the motion is to approve our application for the TAP grant for the scoping study, study JP's sidewalk. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you folks. I didn't see a signature sheet on that bill. Uh, uh, there isn't one. It just it just wanted to make sure everybody was on board and, and okay. it was good with you guys and then I'll take care of the rest of it. Okay, the minutes will reflect our approval then. Correct. Okay, what else we got? All right, uh, so we have a um, couple items that I emailed to you uh, that um, came from, uh, one came from Marty Wasserman, our town emergency management director. Uh, he should be on in a little bit. Uh, one is the uh, county uh, uh, road uh, maintenance mutual aid agreement that we approved Last year, it's just up for, they, they asked to just renew it again this year. Uh, and the other is approving the local emergency management plan, but he should be on a little bit to, to discuss that. Uh, the other item I emailed to you was the contract uh, sent out by Byron for the replacement of the culvert on Gleason Road. Okay. Uh, so that takes care of those. So those will be brought up by those people later on. Uh, a couple other things. Um, work on the technology in the boardroom is ongoing. Um, it's um, it's going to look a lot different when, when everybody gets back, and, and hopefully we're, we're going to be getting there, but it, it, it could be ready as soon as the next meeting. So uh, working on that. Uh, the electrician for the lighting upgrades will be here Monday to start work on that. 
um, our safety grant, um, uh, we wanted to add um, the backup camera for the new highway truck. The cost of that can be added to this grant application. Uh, so Byron and I are trying to get uh, that cost from the vendor. Uh, so we can add it to the to the grant application and we will be able to get uh, up to half of that back. There's an allotment for that in there. So we're working on that. Once we have that cost, I'm going to be submitting the grant application to VLCT. So we should be in good shape there. Uh, Pat from Vermont Digital finished the work this morning on our uh, laptops, being able to connect to the office, uh, Byron's laptop, Mike's laptop, and the one for the transfer station for Dell uh, are all set up and ready to go. And uh, they will now be able to access their information uh, on the server at, at the office and then way it can be backed up and stored. So that's uh, all set. Uh, I have some follow-up on our sewer allocation requests that we sent out for uh, increases. Um, I've talked to representatives from the Alpine Pipeline, from Aldermans, and from the Ground Round, all of whom say the readings from the city are inaccurate, and they are attempting to uh, secure new readings from them for 2020 and are going to be following up with me. So um, they're both of them, all, all three of those had uh, significant increases over, over the year before. So they are working on that. Uh, but no word back from them or the city on the validity of the inaccuracy. Uh, the graphic edge was one we had talked about as missing one uh, going back to last year. Uh, I met with, um, his name was Mark Panagini. Uh, he uh, works for the graphic edge. Uh, he was here yesterday and uh, was able to find uh, in the land records um, that Clark Realty was an owner of the building and they were the ones that applied for an allocation, which was the remaining orphaned allocation that I had on the right. list. So we've been able to assign that to them. So they are all set. Um, the also, the also the topic in the letter that we had sent them about the stormwater discharge into the sanitary sewer system came up. Uh, he insists he has in writing permission to do that. Uh, he would not share with me the right, the information he had. Uh, he said the owner of the business has not given him permission to do so yet. So he would not give it to me to show me their permission. Uh, so we're still waiting on follow-up from that. Um, Bill, on the allocation that was tied into Clark Realty, I remember yes. seeing that one. Could we have um, maybe a letter from you to Graphic Edge confirming that so that we, we tie that, we tie them together and we don't have to go through this again. Yep, absolutely. Um, I, I, I will, I can do that. And he also uh, gave me the book and page number uh, from the land record. So I have that now on my spreadsheet from the follow-up that we have the book and page number where it shows Clark Realty as the owner of that property during that time. So uh, yes, I can tie up that, uh, that part of it. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, okay. That is yep. everything I have. Well, that's quite a bit. Thank you, Bill. Um, any questions or requests of Bill from select board members? Okay, let's moving right along. Carrie Clark, town clerk and treasurer. Good evening. Hi, um, Carrie. Hi, Mary. How are you doing? Good. Um, I have uh, three things I'd like to touch upon tonight, um, and I'll be brief because I believe you have a 630 mm -hmm. uh, uh, person. Um, so number one, just a reminder for anyone who's listening, um, my reminder for taxes, the third installment is due May 10th. We are already at 57% collected. Um, so we're looking good uh, with just a couple weeks left. And this is the last payment of the entire year. And um, for anyone listening, that is a big deal. If you haven't made any payments um, this year, you will want to try to do so. So your name doesn't end up in our book, but you know that's a practice that we end up doing if it happens that way. 
Um, I get a lot of re- uh, quest- questions about that, which is why I, I said that. Um, and then the last two things I wanted to say uh, might be a little more lengthy. So I'll just brief on them. And if we wanted to talk about them at another time, that's totally fine. Um, I did meet with a man that represents one of the systems um, for digitizing land records. And that kind of fell into my lap a couple weeks ago. Um, He called me and reached out to me and um, being um, new to all of this, um, I I wanted to hear somebody tell me what what their program does. so I won't get into a whole lot of detail, but I certainly can give you more detail if you want at another time. But this was from the COTS system. Yeah. And I, um, uh, I really focused on some of our concerns that were in, you know, when I first started, we had talked about uh, privacy, mm-hmm. um, the cost, all of the, the things that are, are concerning to us. And um long story short, it was very uplifting um, to hear that it wouldn't cost as much as I originally thought. Um, And also, it was nice to hear that the privacy part of it is um, well looked into and um, taken care of. Um, And also, um, researchers wouldn't be... um, allowed to get on that system without a secure passcode is is one way to describe that. So um, like I said, if you want more information, I'd be happy to talk more about it. Um, I was on a brief uh, conference call for um, land records um, from different town clerks around the county who have um, experienced uh, this and are using the, these systems. Mm-hmm. And um, it takes a lot to convince me about anything. And they did a pretty good job um, just explaining uh, how much um, easier and more beneficial to uh, a c- more people than I thought it would be beneficial for. Um, so I'm kind of leaning towards this way of land records in the future. Um, again, there's uh, there's more companies out there to talk to, but that was the start. And um, I, I thought it was a good start. Um, like I said, if you wanted more information, I can let you know. But the last, I did have one other thing tonight to talk about before the 630 mm-hmm. person comes on. And that was a question in regards to um, uh, seasonal employees. Um And my question comes to you from both Susan and I, and we were wondering, um, was it ever a policy that was passed that seasonal employees need to reapply every single year and redo their um, information for the payroll system? Um, And this hooks into um, Mike Rowe, and if he wanted to chime in, I'd be happy to let him do so. Um, This came up in a conversation with him. Yeah. So like every year I've always had kids reapply for lifeguards. Um, And I I don't know why. I mean, I've been doing this for like 17 years. So I I don't remember if that was ever a policy that they reapply every year. I usually have a quick conversation with them. And if they're coming back, you know, if I want them to come back, that kind of thing. Um, and they've always had to reapply and do all their paperwork. And I'm wondering if that's something that needs to be done. You know, if they don't come back, they don't come back. If I, if I do it for new people that I hire, obviously. But we just were talking, um, Carrie and I, because kids are just filling up paperwork after paperwork every year. And was that actually a policy? And, and we might not have an answer right now. So it was more of a question. Yeah, I think I it's better to document. I think it's better to document every time you bring somebody on in a seasonal position. That's important for them as well. Okay. Like I said, this can be an ongoing thing. And uh, it was just something that came up in conversation that we all were wondering about. So 
I mean, that certainly makes sense, JP, to always cover cover our trail with paper, you know, the paper trail. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's... JP? Quick question. Yeah, all no, J let JP finish what he was going to say. Oh, I'm all set. Thanks. Thanks, Don. Okay. Don. Don. No, just a quick question, uh, Carrie. Uh, how's your PTTR backlog coming? <laughs> My backlog? Well, actually, it's um, uh, having Mary there to um, kind of take the brunt of phone calls and appointments and all of that has really, really helped me. Um, and I am now in March. So that makes me very hopeful and it didn't take me long to get there. So I'm very hopeful. I'll be able to be caught right up within a month, I believe. Beautiful. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Don. You're, you're welcome. Okay, um, so we've now reached 630 and I note that we have on our Zoom conference, um, Mr. Anil Sashdev, and I'm sure I'm mispronouncing your name. I am sorry. Um, he is with the Holiday Inn. Recently, um, there has been press and also a major conference, um, Zoom conference among city officials, uh, town officials, the um, state officials for DCF concerning the housing of homeless persons at the Holiday Inn and the Quality Inn. The Holiday Inn, of course, is in Rutland Town. Um, the Quality Inn is in Rutland City. So um, there was quite a bit of discussion. I think the Rutland Herald uh, reported it pretty, pretty extensively and accurately i was on the call and i think we're going to hear a little bit more from chief dumas later but um mr sashdev requested permission to address the board and we welcome him tonight thank you thanks for coming you're welcome uh, well uh, uh i read the mary, sorry I'm, I'm sorry uh anil is john is, is this mary uh ashcroft Yes. Okay, Mary, I wanted to interrupt um, because... Well, who are you? Well, that's oh. what I'm about to say. I'm, that's why I'm asking your permission. I'm letting you know that Anil asked me to be on the call, and I want your permission. If not, then I'm happy to hang up and wish you the best. But No, no, this is, a, oh. this is a public meeting, so of course you're allowed to um, okay. participate. Well, thank yeah. you. I, no, I just wanted to let you know. I mean, I'm John Christopher. Anil asked me as a friend. Uh, I do some real estate work for him. I mean, I don't work at the hotel or anything, but I have done real estate work for him over the years. Uh, and he asked me as a friend, he's got some trepidation, you know, about the call and some anxiety. You know, naturally, he's there by himself without any other representation or anyone in his company. So, you know, with the English uh, language oh. uh, interpretation a little bit, he just asked me to, to be here. So, we're Okay, well, let's, let's hear directly from him first, okay? No problem. All right. Thank you. Mr. Hey, is, am yes. I pronouncing your name correctly? I'm sorry. Perfectly. Yes, it's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. You know, I just want to, uh, you know, I read the article uh, uh, in the newspaper about the concern uh, about the, both the property, Holiday Inn and the Quality Inn. I, we do agree with you that there are some incidents happening at the hotel. And we want to work with uh, the town and the and the and the community and the people, and want to make sure how we can improve so that this kind of incidents are not being repeated again. Uh, at the same time, you know we are also on the uh, on the end where this is happening from our property, and we are also suffering for that. But at this time, you know, I want to. Uh, you know, have all the views from uh, you people as you are expert in this thing, you know, and give me some kind of, you know, uh, a line of action, what I can take and so that we can improve this situation much better. Okay. Um, John Paul, did let me start with you. John Paul Fagnan is a select board member and he is also our health officer. So I'm going to ask if he has any um, response to your your statement. I don't have any response at this time. Okay. 
Um, any other select board member wish to respond? Mary, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't attend the meeting because I didn't think it was appropriate. I wasn't asked. Uh, uh, I know I probably could have come, but you probably had enough people there. <laughs> but you, you having been on the call, and uh, how many, how many other town? Uh, Chief Dumas was on the call. Right. Right. Was JP on the call? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, my question is: Did the subject come up of how many? How many residents in that particular situation are located at the uh, Holiday Inn at present? Do you, did you get a number? Well, let's ask. It's 86. I'm not 86. hearing any. 86. Okay. I'd just like to add, is that just the Holiday Inn or does that include quality and also? I've lost, I've lost audio some for some reason. I don't, that's kind of interesting. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, we can. The, the answer is 86. Chief Dumas just asked whether that includes the Holiday Inn and the Quality Inn or just the Holiday Inn. Yes, at this time it's 86 uh, number because we had uh, we had requested state to move out uh, six, uh, you know. Uh, uh, this is ridiculous. No. Go ahead, Mr. Sashtev. Yep, uh, it is a, it is an eighty six number as of right now, which include the guests from the Holiday Inn and uh, Quality Inn. Okay, so eighty six is both both motels. Uh, no, no, uh, the both motel. Okay, sorry, eighty six is at, is at the Holiday Inn, and fifty two is at the Quality Inn. Okay, eighty six fifty two. Okay. Okay, um, so. You know, there were a, a number of concerns expressed, and um, we, I, I will tell the select board that I received, and I think I shared it with you, um, an email today from Senator Josh Terenzini, who had been in touch with the DCF commissioner, and DCF um, is willing to reimburse us for the police calls that um, have been necessary and I will point out that um, average police calls between the town and the state police to Holiday Inn in the past years, on average, has been 52 per year. So that's one a week. Um, if you notice the, the handout that was in your packet, in the first three and a half months of this year, with the um, housing situation at the Holiday Inn, that number has risen to... 115 just in three and a half months. So if you do the math, if you multiply it out, we're looking at 400 potential calls there um, through, the, through the whole year. And that's a, a huge load. So it looks like thanks to Senator Terenzini, we may be getting some assistance to cover the costs of those calls. Um, but that doesn't address the underlying um, you know, what the, the underlying situation there and also in the neighborhood, the problems that are resulting from um, theft and um, other things for our merchants in that section of town. So I guess I'm back to Mr. Um, Sashdev. Do you have any kind of screening or um, inspection of the rooms? How do we know that the fire alarm systems, the smoke alarm systems in each room um, are working? Um, we heard concerns from the city fire chief that people were plugging in hot plates and cooking devices and overloading the circuits. Our hotel staff checking to see that that is not happening at the Holiday Inn. Um, generally, what do you do to inspect and make sure that the safety codes are being met on a daily basis? We have a logbook uh, system where every week we go into the uh, rooms of the guests and we verify uh, if the smoke detectors are working. And if they are not working, they are being uh, put in the logbook that the battery was missing or somebody took it out or whatever, whatever we change it back, we put it in the logbook. So there is a logbook at the hotel, which has been maintained every week. We have a strict, uh, you know, uh, uh, protocol. Uh, we make them sign that, that if they play with any smoke detector, their tenancy will be uh, right away canceled. 
And uh, at the same time, we have uh, we had put some extra staff on the property. Uh, their job is to just go into the room and check the sanitation and the uh, you know uh, smoke detectors. If there's anything to cook in the room, uh, we do take it out, and we log it out everything. Okay, and how many tenants have you um, evicted because they violated these rules? We evicted six of those on Monday. Six. On Monday. On Monday, and, last and Monday. Prior... And before last, before last Monday, we had evicted two more, two. Okay. So we are getting more stricter with them now after, you know, we read everything, you know, so we want to be like zero tolerance right now with anything. All right, and prior to Monday or prior to the news reports in the in the Herald, were you doing any of this uh, weekly log and weekly checking? Yes, that is that is that is going on from last uh, six months. Okay, and to whom do you provide the log? Uh, to the fire fire chief, you know, Patrick. Uh, uh, Patrick and GJ, you know, mostly they are the one who come to the property to check all this stuff. DJ. Yeah, I think you're talking the, of the city. What about the Holiday Inn in the town? We have a different fire chief. Uh, we, can... we haven't got any uh, uh, anybody come over there to inspect that, you know. But we have log and ready, which we can we can provide you. Okay. Okay. So Patrick is uh, Division of Fire Safety. Yes, correct. And and he checks how frequently. At, uh, we are talking about holiday at quality in they were there last week last wednesday they came and they checked everything what about holiday in holiday in uh about two three months back okay two three months back all right so what are some of the issues that you are seeing down there? You read about the reports in the Rutland Herald. What are you seeing? We would get, uh, you know, uh, you know, we would try to work with, uh, with, this, with the town and see, because, you know, we don't know who, who of this guest is the one which goes out and do all this kind of, uh, you know, stealing and robbing, you know. So if you people share with us that this is the person, we will evict him right away. Because, you know, out of the 86, you know, we do understand there are six or seven which are not, not a right person, you know, but other 80 of them are the good people who need it very badly. So we would get a help from you and we can kick them out, you know. Are you housing families and children there? Yes. Uh, I understood that the state was no longer sending um, more new families with children there. So how many do you have there at present? This is Holiday Inn only. Yes, correct. Uh, about 20 to 25. Children? Children. Okay. Are you having any difficulty when you do your room inspections with not being allowed to go in and inspect for these safety matters? Most of the time. Most of the time you have problems? Yes. Do you then evict the tenants if they don't allow you to enter? We were uh, initially, you know, we were being told to inform them, you know, but lately, you know, we are been uh, writing them the emails and telling them that, you know, that this person is not uh, uh, going with the company, uh, you know, uh, policies, you know, and we are putting it on the paper and they are helping us to put it out. And who is, who is your contact that's helping you with this? Cassandra. And is Cassandra she, Tracy. And who is she with? DCF. DCS. Okay, DCF. Yeah, Mary, I got a couple questions when you get. Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Don. Uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, Anil, you, you should know that the, the town is very compassionate towards any uh, homeless person. Um, uh, but these. Uh, these ne'er-do-wells can't be tolerated. And uh, I'm wondering when it comes to uh, potential or proven drug use, because that came up in the article, 
Uh, do yes. you have a policy? Uh, do you have a policy that they're automatically evicted if they're found to possess any drugs in the uh, in the residence? Absolutely, yes, we do that. And if you see my email, I had uh, the last email uh, which was uh, uh, done, uh, you know, yesterday. All the six people who were evicted were all dealing with the drugs. Well, that that could be part of the problem of uh, of people not not vacating or not letting you in and uh, not not giving you access to their to their rooms. Um, just so you know, uh, what is what is the present state reimbursement rate per individual? Uh, Eighty nine dollars per day. Per day. Okay. Uh, initially, no, uh, the problem what we were facing was, you know, we were being uh, given this guest, you know, with no security uh, from the state or no help or no guidance. Lately, you know, from last two weeks, we have started getting the security from the state too. It's a security guard. So is that a private security guard? It's Yes, it's a private security uh, guard given by the state, you know. I think it's come from the Green uh, Green Mountain Security. Okay. Uh, after uh, you know, after them coming to the property for the security, I think uh, it is a little bit help for us, you know, so that we can go into the room and inspect the room properly, and we can make you know all the walk even in the late night. But otherwise, it was very scary. Okay, so you've had private security for the past two weeks. Yes. And they help you do the room checks on a regular basis. Room checks and they recognize the people who are doing uh, all the all that, uh, you know, drugs or whatever. The more guests are coming into the property. So they recommend that, you know, this room should be, uh, you know, evicted and we do it in the morning. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn next to our, our chief of police, um, Chief Ed Dumas, to see if he has noticed any, as a result of this recent activity, whether there have been fewer calls to the Holiday Inn as a result. Yes. Chief Dumas. Let's go over, in the last two weeks, we had 50 calls for service. In one way or the other, uh, Holiday Inn and their guests were, relate, were probably 26 of those, of those 50 calls. That includes staff that are occurring over in the Green Mountain Plaza. Anil, who, who is, uh, who's the owner of the, Holiday Inn. Is that you? I'm one of the owner. Who owns the Holiday Inn? It's in the uh, Hospitality Management of Rutland. Okay, so what is what is Uday's uh, job title there? Uh, he's the general manager over there, sir. And how long has he been the general manager for the Holiday Inn? Around five, six years. Six years. So he's responsible for uh, issues that if I go and go to somebody, that's who I go to? Yes, sir. Okay. So as far as getting security for the last two weeks, if I did some quick math here, uh, just with the numbers you have right now at the Holiday Inn and the Quality Inn, you're making almost $13,000 a day, 85000 a week in the last six months, a half million dollars. And you can afford to hire a security person yourself? Sir, we will do that definitely. That's why we are here today to give, take, you know, something from your end so that we can implement that plan, you know. So if you think by hiring a 24-7 security, uh, we can cut it down. I'm with you. Uh, we can we can start doing that. So I would like to, <clears throat> if you want to take and get in touch with, uh, we've dealt with some uh, people that, on Rutland Housing Authority, and they have a certain way to deal with uh, the uh, people that they they house, and I think they may be able to give you some really good pointers on what to do, what not to do. And uh, with the kind of money you're bringing in, you should be able to afford some sort of private security or at least uh, something to uh, take the slack off from the town and the state police that are being uh, overtaxed, basically. It's like having a small city down there. Every problem in the whole ca county is right there at your place. And our merchants are getting being stolen from every day on a daily basis. Right now we have, there's three stores that have their own security and one has a uh, higher security for the door and for the parking lot. I'm not sure if the owners of the uh, Green Mountain Plaza have anything to do with that at this point. I have, haven't had a chance to reach out to them today, but I will in the future. Uh, Sir, I'm willing to listen. Um, I'm willing to do that. 
Okay, so Mr. Sashtev, you will be in touch with our chief of police, um, Chief Dumas. That's and he, he will link you with uh, folks at uh, the housing authority to see if they can share some protocols and services that may be able to assist you, which probably means you're going to have to hire some additional staff and more security. I think for the secure, for the safety of the town and the safety of the neighbor, uh, that is that is what we have to do. I'm willing to do that. Okay. So, um, Chief, we'll ask Chief Dumas to report back to us to see how that's going, and of course, we'll keep an eye on the numbers to see whether um, the calls to the area and the complaints by merchants start decreasing. All Thank right. You. Um, well, other and, uh, select if- board members. Uh, Don, I know you still probably have some more questions. Let me check no, in. With no, you. I don't. No, okay. no, I don't have any questions. I would just like to, I would like to thank Mr. Sachdev for uh, his willingness to cooperate. Mm-hmm. Um, the proof is always in the pudding, but you know we we, we will see. But he has a very, uh, he's offered us a very cooperative attitude, and and uh, I certainly hope that he would get that security in there that's needed. Um, it's it's unfortunate that uh, our businesses have to put up with w- what they are having to put up with. Um, it's a very very difficult situation, and it's a it's a it's a tinderbox. You're kind of darned if you do and darned if you don't. If you look at the national problems that are existing with this looting uh, nationwide, this is a pretty much a microcosm right here. But he's. Uh, uh, you you got to realize, uh, Mr. Sashdev, that this is a this is a big problem for a small town, and we appreciate all the cooperation that you can give. No, sir. Thank you. I'm with the I'm with the town, you know, and I want to work and I want to make sure that all the people are safe, staying in the hotel, staying outside the neighbors and the town, and and I, we don't want to put the load on the chief and the police department, and we will make sure. I will I'll be in contacting you know chief tomorrow and uh, okay. move ahead with the plan, you know, whatever, whatever the recommendation he will give me. Okay, good. Uh, Sharon Russell, select board member, any questions or comments? Well, I have a few comments mm-hmm. since I'm the one that works. Mr. Sashda, I put 40 years of my life working with the homeless and I'm gonna tell you something. The true homeless that are poor aren't the ones causing your problems. It's the drug addicts. I don't know if you're aware, but you know, I. I have street people in my facility every day. I run a soup kitchen and I run a shelter. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing is they, they know they can go down and buy sweatshirts and stuff that have been sold, stolen from dicks um, for five bucks a piece. They can go down and get drugs. Um, you know, they talk to me because they know me. So I think you should be aware that down and back there's drugs being sold. Um, all kinds of stuff going on down there. You've got some bad, bad people down there. I guarantee you, you have some good families, but you also have got some bad people. And, and I will tell you, if they're single, they can go to work. If they're single, I can take them in my facility, but I'm going to tell you right up front, they don't come in my facility doing drugs. I have three staff members that are former drug users that can spot a drug addict a mile away. So my word to you is, better be careful what's going on at night down and back there. Yes. Thank you. And if anything I can do to help you, um, you know, I'd be more than glad to sit down with you and and tell you how I handle things and how we protect ourselves and our staff. I would love to come and meet you, you know. Okay. I run the Open Door Mission. It's down on Park Street. I'm there from 8 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon, mostly every single day. I will, I will come and uh, looking forward to meet you. All righty. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have? Um, John, Paul, anything back to you? I'm all set. Okay, thank you. And I don't believe Joe Donardo is on the call this evening. He's not. Okay. 
All right. Um, well, we very much appreciate um, coming and talking with us, Mr. Sachdev, and we will look forward to your um, visit with Chief Dumas and um, the sharing of ideas to make your facility safer. And uh, also, I, uh, Sharon Russell has run her open door admission for many years, and she is an excellent resource. Um, so we appreciate you opening up these lines of communication and let's keep it that way. Um, Thank you. One other question I have, I mean, it occurs to me as um, the pandemic it comes under control that the Holiday Inn is probably going to start shifting back to welcoming tourists um, and housing tourists in the area. Do you have any plans for doing so? Yes, uh, we will be, you know, once, uh, you know, uh, this pandemic is over and the housing is, uh, the need of the housing is over, you know, we have to completely renovate the property because right now the room are been smashed by this, uh, by the guest, you know, and uh, they are not in a condition where it can be rented back to the regular tourist. So it will be a major renovation when we come back on board with, uh, you know, tourist. Do you have any timeline for doing that? Yes, as soon as they leave, you know, all the uh, the case goods and everything has been ordered. As soon as they leave, you know, we will be needing about 30 days to put the property back. Well, I, I believe there was a, uh, it might have been a holiday in, in the Burlington area that has already evicted all of the homeless and they are already doing renovations, which is why I'm asking what your timeline is for doing it here in Rutland. It was originally set up as a 30th of June, you know, with the IHG. But, you know, by 30th of June, we will have uh, everything back to normal. Uh, but that, uh, that will all now depend on the state, how they are, what is their, their plan of action. Okay. All right. Uh, if there's nothing further, I'd like to thank you again for joining us. You're welcome to stay. We, we uh, cover the rest of town government th uh, tonight at our meeting. Um, and again, our thanks for uh, reaching out and for participating. Thank you very much. And I'm sorry for uh, whatever has happened at the hotel, but I will make sure and we will work together and make sure that, you know, this has not been repeated and we'll try to minimize it. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Good night. Good night. Okay, um, back to our schedule then. It is Barbara Noyes pulling on for Rutland Town Planning Commission. There she is. Yes, right here. Hi. Good to see you all. Um, so putting on uh, the regional planning hat that I have, um, the pocket park and the, the planning grant for that, um, we have a, um, a meeting with the stakeholders for recreation um, set up for May 10th at one o'clock in the afternoon. There's about, there's at least a dozen people that are involved with that. So we'll get that going. The um, bid for a land survey, we, uh, Bill put that in the Rutland Herald on April 21st. It's been on the town website, uh, but for one reason or another, we haven't been able to get onto those online sites to advertise. Um, we'll work that out. But in the meantime, the clock is running to the deadline for people getting their bids in. So I was um, wondering if it would be all right if I sent out a couple of courtesy uh, notifications about about the about the project that we have. Uh, maybe oh, as in, if you have targeted people you want to bid, certainly, yeah. Yeah, we've got like Otter Creek Engineering that's done right. pro bono work right. on on the park, um, and there is uh, Spencer Engineering that does a lot of surveying mm -hmm. um, in North Clarendon. So yeah, I'd love to just send them out a notice saying you know. We've got yes, certainly, and, and please apply if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and the only other thing I have this evening is I've got a member in the planning commission, Mary Beth Coley, who's very interested in um, perhaps getting a conservation commission going in town. And um, there is statute that enables this. Um, it's just advisory only. 
Um, it usually reports to the select board, but sometimes it does some things for um, town planning commissions as well. And, and uh, they're allowed to do all sorts of things, um, natural resource wise, land conservation, energy conservation, um, all kinds of things, the whole list. And she's going to a webinar uh, later this week. So um, she may come back even more interested or maybe deterred at that <laughs> point. But um, we, the, the planning commission as a whole talked about this the other night and we thought maybe um, a good, if we were gonna go this route, a good starting point would be the pocket park mm -hmm. and having this group help manage that or, um, you know, have it, have it oversee the, you know, what happens next at that pocket park. Um, so that's, that's just one of the, the group's ideas. Um, and if you're interested, um, I could come and get uh, Mary Beth Poley at a future meeting. We could do a short presentation for the select board about what she finds out. Um, so I have, I have read other towns um, have conservation commissions and they've, you know, I, I know some are very active. Um, my suggestion for the benefit of the select board would be that you put together maybe a one pager on, um, well, the statutory authority, um, the what conservation commissions do and some other towns that have them in our area so we can, you know, kind of check in. And then, then I think your offer, you and Mary Beth, to come in and speak to us um, at a future meeting would be a good one. But let's start with a, you know, written summary, please. Yes, please. Can do that. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Any questions of our town planning commission chair? Barbara Noyce Pulling. If not, thank you very much, Barbara. We appreciate okay. your work and the work of the Planning Commission. Sure. All right, Mike Rowe, wearing your other hat now, Town Rec Director. Evening all. Just so you know, the uh, water was turned on to our buildings uh, today. So that is a, a, a great sign. That means hopefully the cold weather is gone. We are also on our second cut of the grass, and that's just a beautiful smell. Um, we baseball uh, schedule for majors and minors is on the town's website. Thank you, Bill, for uh, linking that up there. That kicks off next week, uh, obviously practicing all of the guidelines. Um, the kids are very ecstatic. We have a great turnout for our majors and our minors teams. Um, probably the best we've had in quite a few years. So that's going to be huge. So if you want to check out a game and support the local kids, it is on the town website under recreation. Other than that, we are moving forward with getting the parks, you know, full go for summer. Um, you know, we've, we've seeded, we've done a lot of different things to get the grass back to hopefully get it back to where it's going. Other than that, uh, the pool cover will come off next week, and that's always a very exciting time. Um, and that's where we're at. We're, we're getting ready to go. And uh, people are there all the time up in Northwood. So as Byron can attest, we were talking about it today. When I went up there today, there were kids. They were all spread out, but there were just a lot of people in the park, which is great to see. That's what I got. Thank you. I, um, Jamie and I, with our dog, walked, our dog was on a leash, by the way, walked the main loop for the first time on Sunday. It was terrific. It's very dry out there. Um, it is. Yeah. So please, please, folks, be careful. Um, but it's, it's a lovely walk, and I encourage folks. I also noticed that the stakes are there, too, uh, for the connection path, the shared use path down to our new easement area and Shazana Drive. So it looks like progress is being made there, too. Um, other select board members, any questions of Mike Rowe? If not, thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. And we'll see you at the park. All right, Byron Hathaway, Town Road Commissioner. Welcome. Ah, there we go. Uh, yes, uh, good evening. Um, 
uh, one thing we had, it's in your packet, I believe, is the contract with uh, Menden Trucking Excavating for uh, the Gleason Road culvert. Um, so if you approve that, uh, then maybe Mary can uh, sign off on that. Um, well, let's, uh, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five different signature lines on that. Why don't we start with that? Uh, JP, uh, remembering your comments from previous similar contracts, I went through last time and I think there was a arbitration clause, which I crossed out and the arbitration clause is not in this one. There is an acknowledgement of our um, arbitration section, which I crossed out because obviously we're not going to sign that if there's no arbitration clause. Did I do it the right That's way, cool. JP? I, I think you nailed it. Okay. So um, if you've had a chance to review the contract, this is the um, with Menden Trucking and Excavating for the culvert repair. I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Motions made by JP. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Thank you, Don. Any questions? Um, or comments before we move on to the vote? If not, all in favor of um, signing this contract, please say aye. 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 Sharon, are you an aye? I said aye. Okay, and, and I will occasionally ask you because the ayes don't always come through, so okay. Thank you. Um, anyone oppose? All right, you've approved the contract and that will be in the town clerk's office for your signature. So thank you on that. All right, Byron, what else? Um, grants and aid. Um, I met with uh, Stephanie Burke from the RPC and we're all approved there. And I got a notice to proceed with her so that some between now and uh, September, um, there's some small project uh, that involved with uh, uh, culvert erosion, that sort of thing. And the state uh, will fund us up to about $12,000 toward uh, making those repairs. And that uh, then gets entered into our road erosion inventory. And in another couple of years, I think we'll be in pretty good shape uh, as far as not having any segments that are uh, in non-compliance. Okay. Money that comes down from the Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, so that's where we are with that. Um, the shared use path, I've got a meeting with um, Robert Clark and Mary Beth Poley on uh, Thursday morning at 9. Uh, anybody wants to show up at the Highway Garage, uh, that uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, we're just going to go over the alignment and some of the stormwater issues and uh, uh, hopefully we'll have that packet uh, uh, application ready to go into Terry Purcell and get that permit under motion. And then the next permit after that would be the Act 250 permit amendment. And then we can go into construction. So hopefully we're about a week behind on our, uh, our timeline. Um, but hopefully through permitting, we can make that some of that time up and still be able to get into construction by uh, uh, September. And I think you shared with me and maybe the others that you had the uh, Vermont archaeological folks down and the area is that we're proposing to put the path is okay and won't disturb any known archaeological sites. That's correct. Uh, we won't actually get anything formal in writing from Scott Dillon until such time that we actually apply for an active <coughs> At that time, then, you know, he will re respond to that permit amendment. Okay. And then my other question is, uh, you asked me to go ahead and perhaps uh, try and secure the uh, um, a grant for the post road sidewalk. Uh, I did attend a webinar this afternoon, uh, which is one of the requirements for uh, applying for that grant. There's two different grants here that we could apply for. One, our federal funds, that's 80-20 money. Uh, typically, um, from the time you apply to the time that you can go under construction um, with federal funds, you're looking at about four years. 
Um, if you go with the small grant uh, application, which is 100% state funds, that's only 50-50 money. Um, and that's what we did when we did the U-Haul sidewalk. Um, if we apply for that particular grant, um, from the time we apply for the grant, get approved, and go to construction, um, we would have that sidewalk completed uh, by, by next fall, probably. Um, my question is there, um, and I would like Mike Rowe to chime in on this. Do we still have the need that was identified in the, in the scoping study um, done in 2014? Um, it, it, it just appears to me at this point that um, the school kids are probably not accessing anymore except through uh, 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 Marty Wasserman, you need to mute, please. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that up as a, as a point of discussion. Um, if, if, if we still feel that the need is there, um, my recommendation after talking with John Kaplan, uh, who oversees these uh, funds, uh, his recommendation was we probably should go for the small grant uh, funding uh, just because of the size and nature of that particular project. Um, it's probably not quite large enough to really stand out and qualify for federal funds, um, which takes quite a bit longer time. Now, one of the other things with the uh, small grant application, um, we don't need to have that sidewalk engineered. Um, so there are some savings there as far as not having to have a formal engineering set of plans. We can hand draw us a sketch as long as we uh, make it clear enough uh, in, uh, in the sketch so that uh, the historical archeological section of VTRANS um, who will come down and do an assessment of that um, it is clear to them where the project is. So I'm just throwing that all out there to you. Um, if the board says, continue, move forward, um, which direction do I go in? Do I go for federal funds or do I go for state funds? Well, I, I think we went with state funds last time because the project couldn't wait the amount of time required for the federal pathway. And um, also we were aware that there were some businesses that we're going to the businesses that are now coming in the south end of town. We were aware they were coming in, so we wanted to get that sidewalk up and running. We have some really nice commercial property that can be developed uh, down in this section of the town, and I think that the, the sidewalk we don't want to get held up for lack of a sidewalk, especially if we can get 50% funding without engineering. That seems to me to be the way to go. This is not the sidewalk, John, that, that's nicknamed after after yourself. This is the connection from the end of the post road sidewalk at the school up to Chisana Drive. So are you suggesting we, we discontinue that effort? I'm just, the, the question has come into my mind. I'd, I'd like to hear from Mike Rowe, maybe he can articulate a little bit better than I can, but maybe we don't have as much need there as, as we had in 2014 uh, when we did the scoping study. You mean because of the shared use path? path? Yes. Um, I think with everything that has come about with the purchase of the land behind the school, which allows us to essentially, we now own that. So we can, if kids want to walk up, they can, they have a safe passage to walk up and then hook on to the shared use path that is going to be created. Before that wasn't the case because we didn't have access to the back behind the school to make that happen. Whereas we have that now. So it, it kind of makes sense from, from my perspective because kids were walking up you know, for practice up at Northwood and we've moved um, a, a, a couple of our sports down behind school now because of the work that we've done in the recent years. They don't have to walk up there. 
So that's taken um, a load of kids off of the road in the afternoon when they would walk along Post Road until they got to Shazana and then whatever, however they got up in through there. Um, so Byron, you know, Byron and I had chatted about that, which one makes more sense. Should we continue with that? Um, and that's up to you, to you folks. I'm just saying from my perspective, we're keeping more stuff at school. And now that we have the property behind school with the shared use path getting put in makes a lot more sense. So well, the object, the object of it was to get the kids off the road, off the post road. And if we can accomplish that through this recent acquisition, that, that seems to be the way to go. Yeah, I believe, JP, I believe we can. There's, uh, I, I truly believe that we can do that by working together rather than going with the sidewalk. Now, that's not to say that the other people that don't use that sidewalk from Green Mountain Power that constantly walk up and down that road. But once again, that's... From my perspective, as far as the school kids, that has become less of an issue than it was in 2014. As a matter of fact, right. the, only, the only sport that goes up there now is baseball. So my question is, when we acquired the land in back of the school, I had understood that there still needed to be an easement to connect that land with Northwood. And don't we still have a gap there or is there an easement now? There is a little bit of a gap, but I think working collectively with our neighbors, we can get an easement rather than spending a ton of money on a sidewalk. But but that's not my decision. I, I think right. that we as, as a community can work together for that um, and make that happen. So uh, I'd like to explore that and, and continue with that route. Um, before we didn't own the property behind, so they literally could go 20 feet behind in the woods, mm -hmm. and then we didn't have anything. Now right. we own almost all of it, but in, there are a couple of different um, neighbors that we could approach and ask and talk to um, to do that. And I think we're still, you know, we just purchased it last year, so it's it's still in the works. Um, but, but that would question be my there. if that makes sense. How big is the gap? Uh, Sorry, Doug. No, go ahead, JP. Mike, how big is the gap? I don't know, by what? 50 yards? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 going, it's it's from the road. Okay, you know where the road is, the, the Green Mountain Access Road, and mm -hmm. it cuts across uh, a landowner's property. I'm not going to mention the name. Um, I'm aware. Okay. And so then we could hopefully hook into, uh, well, then if we had that easement, then we could, the kids could walk there and then um, go up onto the shared use path and be good to go. So we need a 40 foot easement? Yeah, I, by, help me out as far as distance, maybe. <laughs> I'm trying to think, Byron, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, yeah, it, de it depends on that particular landowner, and that's the closest point. Um, but yep. it, 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 it's still, yeah, that would be a great place. Uh, there is another uh, landowner that we could talk to um, that would that would give you an another connection. So I think there's some options there, but there's, I don't know if there's any talking going on at this point. No, there isn't. What's the cost? What what is the cost, Byron? Uh, or approximately, uh, you, you know, because you you mentioned fifty fifty, but fifty fifty means nothing unless we're talking actual dollars. W what's this going to cost? Sidewalk. Yeah. The sidewalk down probably would be somewhere between one hundred and twenty and one hundred and fifty thousand. So. So that would take, uh, say, seventy five thousand of state funds and seventy five town thousand of town funds. Now the seventy-five thousand dollars of town funds, uh, if the sidewalk was built by the highway department, then that would be force account labor, and that would be considered an in-kind match, and not necessarily would you have to shell out cash. Okay, uh, I'm just uh, well. <laughs> well, this I is—I mean, Don, this is a little new to all of us. The the idea that we 
that we take a look at the school access instead of um, Chisana, because we've been on this Chisana thing for like nine years. So yeah, long time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of okay right. to take a try and get a little more information about the the school access before we say to pull the plug on this one. Do we have any deadlines coming up by which we should be applying if we're gonna, you know, go the old route, the Chisana route? We do the Chisana route, and you want to do it and have it built next year. Yes, you've got a June 4th deadline. June 4th, okay. So, um, other than that, you can wait till the next go round, which could be sometime this fall, um, which then still puts you into next year. Yeah. You got, you know, see, the, I'm just thinking that we, we've got a major, uh, really a major housing development on both sides of that road there in that, in that Chisana area between Blue Ridge and Chisana. And I just, I don't know, because it wouldn't be servicing the needs of the residential community as much as the kids in terms of safety and in terms of uh, walking access and so forth. I, I see a lot of people walking that present sidewalk. Um, I always see people walking that sidewalk. So very true. I mean, I mean, to go back to what you said by, you know, you, you're always seeing foot, footprints in the snow. I hate to argue against myself because I just, I just stated before that I don't think we ought to be putting these things everywhere, but I mean, we've already got one that started there. So that would seem like a logical thing to do for the residents there in Chisana and Blue Ridge, but that's just my view. I mean, I think we're halfway there now. It's, it would seem foolish not to complete it. Um, that's not to say that we're going to go all over town and put sidewalks in, uh, but we, we have done that one there for good reason. And uh, it would seem logical to complete it. Well, let's That's my view. Yeah, no, thanks, Don. I, I'm glad you mentioned the neighborhood as well as the school because, you know, there, there are walkers all over up there. Um, so let's get a little more information about the pros and cons. And we still have time before, you know, we've got more select board meetings between now and June 4th. So we can probably make a determination perhaps at our next meeting, whether we proceed along. But so between Byron and Mike, maybe you can give us information that would give us some guidance on which way to go. And if the school does it, the school pays for it, right? We don't. <laughs> Well, so well, yeah, they, I mean, I'm not going to speak for them, but they are the abutting landowners. So they would be the ones that would be asking because it would be in their best interest. I'm not speaking for the school, right. but just looking at it from a common sense perspective. Yes, okay. I would. I would think so. But I'm not in any position to. <laughs> okay. okay. I want to be clear the about that. <laughs> the least, the least common of the senses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, other, the other question that, that came up was should we you know the, the town's resources um should it be put toward instead of that connection from a school standpoint doesn't have a huge need at this very point whereas if we get the scoping study done and then put those resources toward that sidewalk connection at the, at the pinch point on seven, uh, you know, with a, with, a, with a small grant, you could be within three years, you could have a sidewalk done along Route seven. So I am just talking here and, and trying to get everybody to wrap their head around what maybe should be a bigger priority or not. Yeah, I think I'd like to see a map. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll get you something for your packet next time. Okay. Good. Thank you. And thanks for, you know, raising the, a second look. I think we need to do that occasionally. Um, Byron, a couple of things. In our packet, the Portland Regional Planning Commission Public Works Mutual Aid Agreement. Is that yours from Bill? You look surprised. Well, I haven't seen that. I know we, we've had that in the past and we've signed off on that in the past and have joined that. And uh, we have used it in the past uh, under a, a, a non-FEMA design.
disaster, we reached out to a, 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 a neighboring town and they came down and helped us get cleaned up. Yeah. Uh, that came so to us uh, via Marty, via Stephanie Bork. Okay. And, and Ma is, Marty is on the call. Marty's on the call. Marty, does this mean we should be doing, uh, not the emergency plan for a minute, but this is the mutual aid plan? We need to sign this as well to update it. You're muted, Marty. Marty Wasserman, you can unmute. Marty, it's star six. Got to press star six. Okay, he's good. There you go. Are there now? Okay. Marty, you got to hang up your phone. You can't be on your phone and your computer at the same time. I'm going to have to get off this and you sign on a different computer. You have been added to the waiting room. Try that. <laughs> okay. Now his phone is muted. We should copyright this stuff for production. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Marty, if you can hear me, you're muted on your phone now. Oh, what's in the chat, Bill? Uh, it's not for Marty. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll let you know when I see him again. He should be here okay. in a second. Okay, thanks. It, it sounds like we need to re-up our mutual aid agreement. Um, and there's apparently an, an aiding official contact and in the past it's been Byron, hasn't it? That's correct, yes. And who do we have for alternate in the past? I thought Bill was the alternate. Do you remember, Bill, whether I, you were? I think, that's, I think that's accurate, yep. Okay. And if you had a chance to look over this, it's the same as what we signed before. I don't know. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? It, 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 what, it? From everything I saw, it was the same as it was last time. Yeah, it's just it's just a for twenty twenty one. Okay, um, Byron should probably take a look at it though. Yeah, I can. I can. I can. I think I emailed us. I'll send it over to you, Byron. Okay, so why don't we defer on that? If you could put it in the packet for next week, I don't think there's any real urgency, right? Uh, not on the mutual aid agreement. The local emergency management plan was the was the one we needed. Right, the mutual one aid right. one is May first, so I think we're good. So just put it in the packet for next time, and we'll move on to the um, emer local emergency management plan, municipal adoption form, and this is time sensitive. Um, I note that JP has already signed it and there is a place for signature. Let's see. Looks like I would sign if for the select board, if you folks so authorize the emergency plan and authorize me to sign for you. So um, you've had this in your packet. I don't see Marty Wasserman back on. Any questions about this municipal management plan? And Bill, were you assisting in its um, uh, review and adoption? Yes, it was just updating the, the people in the positions. Not, nothing, else, nothing else changed other than contact information for people, so. Okay. Any I'll questions? No, yep. I'll move the chair sign on behalf of the town. So, sign approving the emergency management plan, right? Yes. Okay. Second. Motions made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And aye. Any opposed? No opposed. So I'm going to go ahead and sign it for the board. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think Marty, if you're there or not, we just took care of all of the business except um, 
Byron's going to review the other uh, mutual aid plan and we'll take a look. One more thing for Byron, green up bags. Where do we get them? Green up day is Saturday, May 1st. That's correct. Uh, we've had some people out picking already. Um, green up day bags are available either at the transfer station um, or if or at the highway garage, if you'd let me know you're coming to pick some up or if you you know, can't make either place, but would like some bags, I'll make all the effort in the world to uh, get those bags to you. Okay, I think there's some here at the town clerk's office too. Right, but that's kind of hard for people to get them if the office is closed. Oh, that's true. Anyway, I picked up mine already, so we're good to go on Creek Road. Great. And, and as usual, folks, there's real hot competition for some of the best, dirtiest roadways in town. So you better get your request in and get your bags and get out there before somebody else cleans up what you want to clean up. Okay. Um, any questions for town road commissioner? Yes. Yes. I have one okay. short question by uh, on that field Avenue or, or Grove street project that the city's on right now. Yeah. There's a small, yeah. They're repaving that section from Field Avenue to the bridge. Uh, that's what I understand. Well, do you know whether they're going to pave the very short section from the bridge to the town line? Because that, that that's a, a little bit of a problem right there. And it would, it would just be a shame <laughs> to have that little section all rutted up. <laughs> what I've seen, I believe they're going to. But if um, Don, I, Don, I was just down there and it looks like they're paving a little section on the other side of the bridge towards the town. And so okay. I suspect they're doing it. So I, I, they are going to pave that small section? I was just down there a little while ago and I saw they're probably, I don't know, 100 feet across the bridge onto the town side. So I suspect they're doing it. Okay, they're good. Doing. Good. All right. That answers my question. Thank okay. you. JP? Yes. I guess not. <laughs> Your box lit up. I was wondering if you had anything for Byron. I'm all set. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chris Clark, Town Fire Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the last two weeks, last two weeks we've had six calls for service. Um, I was actually going to talk about the McKinley Avenue being road being closed for a second uh it's going to be closed tomorrow also uh tommy grace called me and he's going to be digging up the city side um as far as the paving i don't know which side they're paving um but tomorrow the road will definitely be closed and going back to the holiday inn um the last time that I know that G.J. Garrow and Patrick Banks have been down there was February 19th, and that was to inspect for the new the COVID vaccine setup. Right. So usually when they go down there, they send me the email, the report, and I haven't got one, so I don't know if, if they forgot or they just never been down there since. Yeah. Um. Could you alert them that there might be some more interest and activity uh, for them going down and looking around? I can, I can call them tomorrow morning. Good, thank you. And just let them know what happened here tonight and the uh, representations made, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, I can do that. Appreciate that. Um, okay, any questions of our town fire chief? No question, but uh, I do have an issue that I wanted to bring up. Um, as you know, Chris works for the city, and um, the city has been allowing him to respond with the city truck to the station, but recently have expressed some concerns over liability coverage. We currently have in place a policy that protects the fire chief, among other officials, when using their personal car for town business that the uh, town's policy is primary and i would like the board to consider extending that to any city-owned vehicle 
that Chris is driving at the time he responds to and returns from responding from a call so that uh, we can give the city some comfort. Number one, that we appreciate the courtesy and we're being responsible about taking our share of the cost, but number two, to facilitate uh, Chris being able to perform his duties rather than having to take the city vehicle, drive to his personal vehicle, get in his personal vehicle, and then drive to the station. And as we know, in first responding, precious moments uh, can be lost by that. Okay. So I would make a motion that we um, extend that coverage for the fire chief only to any city vehicle he may be driving in which he responds to and returns from a call for service in the town. Okay. Motion's I made and seconded. Motion. Sorry, yeah, Don. I second the motion. Yeah, I second the motion. Okay, good I idea. Think Sharon beat you to it. But. Well, that's good. <laughs> okay. Any um any discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Okay. None opposed. The motion carries. And Thank if you. we could, you know, Bill, when you do up the minutes, if we can, how's the best way to do that? Um, just, I guess, make sure Chris has it and then he will have minutes to show to um, any city. Go ahead, JP. So we need to get one, we need to get a, a document in place that would reflect this. And we need to do that for Marty Wasserman as well. We've approved this situation for Marty as our emergency manager, but uh, I just haven't gotten to the point. I haven't gotten the time to be able to reduce it to writing for everybody to look at, but I'll have it in the packet for next to meeting. That would be great. Thank you, JP. Okay. All right, anything further for our town fire chief? Yes, I'd like to ask Chris, if, how, many, uh, how many calls have we had, Chris, uh, down at the Holiday Inn, uh, false alarms or alarm or whatever? Uh, we haven't had a call down there actually in quite a long time. So there haven't been any calls related to the incidents that, that the town has been talking to Sotchtef about? No, the fire department has not been called down there. Okay, good, good. Okay. Anything further? If not, we'll move on to town police chief Ed Dumas. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> So we briefly went over what we talked about on last uh, Thursday, I believe the meeting was. I'd like to thank Mary and, and John Paul for attending the meeting. Uh, I briefly talked about it the last time, but basically we went to uh, all the businesses and asked if they wanted to talk. We also connected with uh, the city police and used Project, Project Vision to, to help facilitate this. And somebody with the state was involved. Was, I didn't write all their names down. There's probably 40 people all together. I would like to, in particular, thank uh, the uh, Hannafers because they were instrumental and they were allowed to say whatever came to mind. The manager was quite explicit in some of the uh, details of what they had to face in the last, you know, four or five months with their personal bathrooms and drug use, and blood, and other things. Uh, that set the tone, I think, for everybody, and there was a lot of shocked people. And but as a result of this, I, I want to say today we did not have that many calls at the uh, at the uh, Green Mountain Plaza. We had a few, but not like we've had in the past. Like the last two weeks, I, I said we had out of 50 calls, 26 of those calls were directly related to either the Holiday Inn or thefts occurring in our Green Mountain Plaza. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I I'm a little hopeful. I'll reach out to some people I know tomorrow. I've also got a call from um, over the weekend from Mark Stockton. He's reached out, and uh, I believe he's uh, patrolling Dick's Sporting Goods. I know that he out, we, we spoke about how his agency or his company uh, is down in the plaza in the city, and they work with the city police to be eyes on all the time that they're, because they're officers, they're short of officers also, and their time is precious. But they, he's been a big help there, and maybe possibly something like that will work out in the future for uh, Green Mountain Plaza and a local security company, because 
we can call Mr. Stockton up anytime and speak to him and not some manager from another part of the state or out of state trying to get uh, some answers. That's about all I have at this point. I'm just I'd like to thank you all again for the help last Thursday. Yeah. And thank you, Chief. I understand you were instrumental with the, the city folks getting this um, put together. It, it appears that slowly um, things are, are getting better. So hopefully it will continue. Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any questions of our town police chief? If not, we're moving on. Town Health Officer, John Paul Fagnett. So we continue to uh, operate under the emergency guidelines as dictated by the governor. Um, the website, the, the Department of Health website has the universal guidance, which is primarily masks still being required in six feet, unless you meet this rubric of vaccine, vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Um, but municipalities are still under an order not to hold in-person meetings unless we can show some necessary emergency ourselves or a situation that must be done in person. We expect and look forward to um, these restrictions being lifted on July 1st. I know that starting May 1st, everybody in the state can get vaccinated. Um, even temporary residents like students will be allowed to be vaccinated in Vermont. Right now, we have about 60% of the population has received at least one dose and 40% of Vermont's population has received two. Uh, so we are kind of setting a pace for that type of compliance, which is going to help keep the infection rate down. So I think we just persevere for a little while longer and um, the governor's target date of July 1st looks realistic to me at this point. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you, JP. And thanks very much for staying on top of that. Uh, any questions for JP as health officer? Yes. JP, what, um, what authority do you have as health officer in regards to the situation at the Holiday Inn? Uh, we found out, I think it was in 2019, Don, you may recall that our fire department uh, was subjected to an explosion down at the Holiday Inn. And we found out during that period of time that uh, I'm considered a state employee for these purposes and the powers are extensive. Um, I can tell you that this is on my radar, but for a number of reasons, which I cannot go into in our public meeting, happy to talk about because premature disclosure will result in a disadvantage for the town. There are reasons why we have not done a comprehensive inspection, which would include the state fire marshal and G.J. Garrow. So, but that is something that I can tell the board we will be scheduling in the next four to six weeks. That's reassuring because if there's anything that I would consider to be a health and safety problem in the town of Rowan, uh, that would definitely be high on my list. Uh, and and I understand that you know you 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 pretty much regulated by what the state says on this masking thing, but this is a horse of an entirely different color down there. And uh, I would be interested so I to know, I would be interested you know, to know, I, you know what we have, what we have available to us in terms of enforcement. At some point, if it's appropriate for executive session, then maybe we'll do that. But thanks, JP. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks, JP. So committee meeting updates. Um, well, I will say that, that Don and I are acting as the um, 
scholarship committee, Don has reviewed. Why don't you report on what you've done so far, Don? Well, since I since I'm open and you're hearing my my clock now, <laughs> I guess um, as as before, Mary, uh, the last time I was on the board, I was privileged to sit with you on this committee as well. And um, it hasn't changed much, except that there are more heart-wrenching stories. And um, as we found before, we wish we had maybe a couple hundred thousand to dole out, uh, but we don't. So we have we have decisions to make, but <clears throat> there's some awful worthy students. Um, and I, I will just say that um, for those that are quick to criticize um, educational failures in our community, I can assure you that there's a lot more successes than there are failures. And, and all you have to do is look at uh, even a smidgen of these applications and you would see some of the most eloquently expressed, coherent, emotional, and really quite tear-jerking in some cases, uh, applications and expressions by these very young but very mature students. It's uh, quite a privilege to do this job, I can tell you that. Uh, I wish we had more money, but Mary and I will split it up the way we usually do after she gets gets done hers. Then we have our bargaining session and and we go from there. But yeah. Yeah. they um, were good. So I think we had twelve applications. Uh, the deadline was last Friday at noon. We had twelve applications, and uh, so I'll need to review, and then Don and I will compare, and, and that the tough, tough bargaining will then ensue. Um, but we'll get a list to the full select board for approval before too long. All right, thank you, Don. Any other committee meetings? Um, I do have a question. We do have a townwide celebration committee, right? That's Sharon and myself, yeah. Yeah, are we gonna do a town-wide celebration? I don't know, well, I think we have to see what, what uh, JP says and what we can hold. Okay, so um, maybe you could get some direction to us for our next meeting to see if you know it's possible or whether we delay it or what we do with it. Either that or Sharon and I will get together and come up with a real surprise for everybody. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Any other committee meetings? Um, okay, moving on then. Update on project list. Um, Bill has, as he noted, um, passed out to us the, the lists, the uh, two different lists. And I think, I'm not sure why we ended up with two different lists, but I think we should probably try and put them together and maybe prioritize them a little. I noticed looking at these, there was one that I had, I had meant to mention and I did not. And that is um, some kind of succession planning uh, for some um, folks that, you know, might someday be retiring. Um, I think I've mentioned this before. Um, Howard Burgess has expressed, you know, the interest someday of retiring from his position there. Um, the, our road commissioner someday will be retiring and just generally any department head just to make sure there's some plan in effect that if they should um, get the wonder job out in Colorado and move on that there's some plan in effect that we um, have a replacement ready or a way of getting a replacement. Um, so I would propose we add succession planning to our list of projects or goals for this coming year. Okay, um, so we've covered our usual agenda items under new business, the vehicle indemnification for the town fire chief. We just did that. Um, we reviewed the grant proposal for JP sidewalk. Is there any other new business? Um, I will, 
I did share with the um, select board members a, a pretty good article from VT Digger concerning the likely two tranches of money that will be coming to town from the um, ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act. The first one we're pretty familiar with, it's uh, sometime in late May or June, uh, it's anticipated to be $406,894, which is a substantial chunk of money. There will be restrictions I, it, um, and it's directed to certain uses. I've seen general um, guidelines, but I haven't seen any specific ones. But then there is another um, expected tranche of money, which is going to be coming uh, usually to county governments, but in states where county government is not primary, it will be passed through to municipalities. And we expect that that amount will be $194 per resident. And as of 2019 census, we were at 4,088 residents. So that will be um, uh, 700 and well, it's going to be over three quarters of a million, 777,000. So all today, all together, if these come through as, you know, generally anticipated now, the town will have just under $1.2 million um, to work with from this uh, American, the ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act. And there will be strings attached. So again, um, department heads start thinking about um, what projects there are out there that we might be using um, the money to do. I did see one suggestion in one town where when this money starts coming through, they are already putting it into a separate fund to make it easier both to track expenditures, um, but also I think the payout, the, we have four years to spend it. So um, just more guidance will come, I'm sure, but I thought I'd mention that so that people can start thinking about it. Um, our next meeting is uh, May 11th, just a reminder at five o'clock, we're meeting a little early, we're meeting at five, we will be meeting with our uh, representatives to the Rutland Free Library Board, that's Eddie Ogerzalik and Anita Dutch. And then we'll begin our regular select board meeting at 6 p.m. So May 11th. Okay, um, under old business, I don't, think we need to pull up anything from that list at this meeting. Is there any other new business from any select board member? Okay, so if there is no other new business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Nobody wants to go home, Mary. I oh, know. we're already home. We're already home. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Does that mean we have to go to the town office? <laughs> I'll treat that <laughs> as a second <laughs> from JP. I will do. <laughs> okay. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Okay, um, motion carries. Have a great evening and thanks very much everyone.